October the 19th, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Tupac, Shakur, uh, Can-Am Studios, and Tarzana. His first dinner. Yeah, that way the man know what he want to do. Yeah. It's been in his head too, bro. Yeah, but the man, he knows not that late. By, he may come in like he just came in. Uh-huh. And, like, 11.30. Uh-huh. But right, he's so, constantly working. He doesn't fuck around. Huh? The whole thing, he came in, he won't be, he uh -huh. know he won't be. He huh? don't want C, B, E, F, G. He know exactly what he wants. That's right. too loud. How do I turn it? Did he start on Friday? He started Friday. I didn't work Friday. Well, Friday, I think he went to a Newsweek sign, by the way, in the Beverly Center. Mm -hmm. And they called me. Mm -hmm. Allison. Mm -hmm. And I think that must have been Friday or something. Yeah, I think he went shopping. I know he was here. Mm -hmm. I, would I, would, I would say Saturday. I would say Saturday when he officially started. So Saturday, Sunday. He's been in here every day? Or what? Well, Tuesday. Uh -huh. Today's Thursday. Today's Thursday. Tuesday, he had 12 tracks because she told me. Yeah. So I figured maybe he went to work Saturday yeah, over the weekend. or Sunday, because mm -hmm. I know he's been in a few malls, I guess he had to buy clothes and stuff, because people had spotted him and knew call that up. he was on the call. Who, who's uh, producing them? Who's producing the track? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think Dad's going to be working with You have to ask yeah, him. Okay. Come on now, let's pop a foot. Let's roll. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> oh, why, sir? Oh, why, sir? <laughs> oh, why, sir? <laughs> when they don't think things, you don't look the same. Let the ghetto get the best of your baby. That's the same. Bro, ain't time, and now you're about to be the cease. And finally be a piece. So where your niggas at now? Because everybody got their stats. I mean, they get together home. See, I look like a nigga that can die. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah.
Take it back. I'm yeah. saying I'm going to put a vote. That's all right. All right. Remember, remember, we can bring you in and out whenever we want. Okay. You want to save it? Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Here we go. This shit mad fast. Hey, but you're doing it. You know. You're doing it, though, girl. Exactly. You are. Here we go. We're right from the front. Bad finish on how it started new, everything is beautiful. Hey. So, I know we didn't talk before, so I said, Fuck it. Talk to Jack. I'm glad you did it. <laughs> so, which one to talk about? Well, let's talk about what's happening. Been in the studio for like what, four days? When did you start? I've been in the studio since the day I got out. Okay. I mean, one second, please. Oh, okay. okay. I've been. Uh, I've been in the studio since um, the day after I got out. Came to the Friday. studio. I got out Thursday. I've been here since Friday. Mm -hmm. How many hours a day, but up about twelve hours a day. Mm -hmm. Up until they kick me out, it'd be dark and everybody got to go to sleep. Well, people be passing out, so I'll be like, okay, I guess we got to go home now. So then we go home, come back early in the morning, do it again. I think we broke a record this time for any recording. I'm trying to 
do the album in less than a week so I can call my album Seven Days. <laughs> but if I change the title, I might do a couple of songs. So, but um, we did thirteen tracks, thirteen tracks in four days, thirteen fat tracks. Um, we heard a couple of them. What, what's what's yeah. the general things you heard? All right, the big dog, the ones that's gonna really be humdingers, yeah, yeah. the big ones. Two of America's Most Wanted with right. me and Snoop. That's gonna be a humdinger. Right. Shorty Wanna Be a Thug. That's gonna be a big one. Mm -hmm. And um, Wonder Why They Call You Bitch with mm -hmm. Faith. That's gonna be a big one. Um, Picture Me Rolling. It's gonna be a big. It's, it's just gonna be fat. I guarantee it's, it's different than any other album I came with so far. This one might throw a lot of people off because I just, I just blacked out. So what what what's different about it? Talk about it. Here you go. My other work. Um, this one is like this album is a reaction to the backlash from C. Dolores Tucker. Hey, turn that down. The backlash from C. Dolores Tucker, C. Dolores Tucker, um, Bob Dole, all those people that just kept sweating me about the music. Now it's I feel as though this album is something for them to sweat. Before my albums wasn't even bad and they was calling me a gangster and just messing up my whole credit line and just ruining my reputation and look at my songs on the first album Brenda's got a baby on the second album keep your head up on the third album dear mama what what where's the killer music where's the make kids want to jump off a bridge shit? I just don't see it so now this album I didn't try to make any dear mamas any keep your head up I just came straight with dealing with my own anger I'm doing this just for what the music is preventing my anger getting everything I want to say out since I can't express myself in any other way, form, or anything. Plus, I was locked down for 11 months, so I got a lot of stress and pressure to, you know, get up off my chest. I think I did it on this album. That's why I stayed in the studio. Did you write a lot of them while you were in jail? No, I wrote only one song in jail. Everything else I wrote while we sat up in here drinking um, Buckweiser. <laughs> 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 Buckweiser. <laughs> so... <laughs> After the Buckweiser was gone, <laughs> we had a song usually, you know. So, with Daz, Johnny J, and I'm about to do one with Sam Sneed right now, a few months. So, I think it's good. Uh, so, a lot of the songs, that, like you mentioned, the ones you mentioned before, were almost like sermons, a lot of that. No yeah. one really gives you credit for writing those things. Why don't you talk about that? It pissed me off. I'm not doing it no more because mm -hmm. I'm going unnoticed. Now, I'm going to just put out an album full of just anger. Because before, that's all they were saying. Is all I do is screaming, you know. My shit had motherfuckers. When I want you to cry, you're going to cry. When I want you to feel sorry for this person, you're going to feel sorry for that person. When I want you to feel, you know, we having fun, I want you to feel like you really, really having fun when you're listening to the music. So, on the same token, life is not just beautiful. It's not just having fun. It's not, it's not all killing and drugs, though. I'm not going to front, but it's not all fun. So, the perfect album to me is when you talk about the hard shit, Talk about the, the sexy shit, the fun shit, the uh, the sad shit, the hurting shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I had that in all of my albums. This album right here, it's not too many sympathetic songs because I'm not caring. I'm mad because I'm like, all the critics, all y'all talked about was shit that wasn't on my album. So I figured I don't even have to write that no more. I can write whatever I want now. And I thought I was being politically correct when I wrote my shit. But um, now I don't care. My shit is very un-PC. Maybe, you know what? Just sitting here talking to each other, I might call my shit NC-17. <laughs> no children under 17. Maybe they won't get mad at me. What you think I should do? That's good. So they don't get mad. I'm saying, because, you know, since it is, since it that, but everybody else get to talk, man. Whatever they want to. Rock groups, everybody. Bob Doe came all after all of the rappers. I'm in jail watching TV. Like, damn, Bob Doe talking about all this shit. Pulp Fiction was... How come we ain't talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger? Mm -hmm. Wanna well, know why? Because Arnold Schwarzenegger is giving money up for his campaign. Right. You know what I mean? Um, why are they so worried about gangs? You know what I mean? Why is gangs such an important thing when this whole country is made up of gangs? The FBI, the, uh, what's the, what's the dude? Tobacco, firearm, ATF, and task force, and police departments. They all little gangs in every little neighborhood. They might be a good gang or a bad gang, but they're still a gang. And Democrats, Republicans, everything is gang affiliated in this whole country. 
um, Masons, whatever. Everybody got their own little clique and their own little gang and everybody gang banging in their own way. So why they getting mad when we just be? I think the future is is um, based on us gang banging in a way, but not the way we gang banging now against each other. I think if we gang bang like had just one click, you know, all the Mexicans was cool, we could make treaties with them, all the brothers had it united, we can have treaties with them, where it was just, like, regulated. I think that would be the future. Because then we have voting power. That's what we need, because that's what they listen to. That's why I see Dolores Tucker and them talking all that shit. They, they must be running for something soon. Um, I know Bado, his old ass is running, and he need something mm -hmm. to, to get people attention off the fact that he, like, two steps behind Reagan. And y'all seen what happened with Reagan? As soon as Reagan got out of, um, out of the presidency, he was gone. I remember Bush went after you, and uh, Quayle. Quayle went after you. Look at my history, man. You know what I mean? I got a. It's bad for me. It's been stress and drama the whole time. I went to jail. I went to jail for some shit I did not commit. Um, not only that, but I went to a maximum security predicament. You know what I mean? Where motherfuckers is not getting out ever. I'm up in there with dudes that's never getting out ever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm up in there for a year and a half to four and a half. Far away from home. But, mm -hmm. you know. What did you think about when you were up there? What I thought about? Yeah. Um, coming back. What was I going to do? How was I going to do it? The steps I wanted to make. What I wanted to get at. I thought about it. The album. I said, this album is going to They're going to feel all 11 months of what I went through up in this album. Because I'm hitting with nothing but trouble mm -hmm. but good trouble trouble that that bring money don't bring pain all i'm doing is talking shit you know and i should be allowed to talk as much shit as i want because as i look at the news i see these people talking much shit about us and they can't get censored you know they can call us dope fiends and say we all on welfare knowing they all on welfare that can um i mean some white separatist group can say you know we don't like the police we don't like the government and it's all good but and somebody black say it, or somebody Mexican say it, you know, they ready to lynch you. You cannot say that you're against the government, you're against all that. Why we can't be separatists? You know, why we can't have our own beliefs and um, and have principles based on those? So, what do you think about Death Row? That's kind of almost like a family. Kind Death of Row? Like a, little, a completely different clique. You're Com talking about a clique. Yeah, completely, to be honest with you, man, it was no one else, nowhere else to go. No one else wanted to take me but the row. To say I'm never going to go back to jail, I didn't want to go to jail in the first place. I didn't do nothing to go to jail in the first place, but they put me there anyway. So I was saying I never wanted to go to jail. I never gave them a reason to put me in jail. Right. But I guess I talked too much shit last year, and so I went to jail. Um, but it's not like I'm going to say I'm never going to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail again. I'm not going to do anything that I, that's going to make me go to jail. I'm not going to break no laws or nothing like that. But, um, shit, that ain't stopping them from putting me in jail. They just put niggas in jail when they want to. You, you got shot last year. Talk about this This whole year has been a pretty, pretty traumatic yeah. year since about no the doubt. end of 93 or something like that. No beginning doubt. of 94. Talk about that. Talk about a little bit about getting shot. I got shot five times by some dudes who wanted my jury. That's what they said they wanted my jury, but I think they're trying to rub me out, really. Mm -hmm. Why did they say? Because, man, if they wanted my jury, they, they could have took my jury. They didn't take everything. Don't nobody, don't robbers don't leave behind uh, $80,000 Rolexes, you know what I mean? They don't do that, in case nobody know. Um, and robbers usually will rob you and break break out. Mm -hmm. You know, robbers don't stop too many times to fill you with five bullets, and don't nobody, there's four people there, and you're the only nigga to catch five bullets. Robbers don't do it like that. Those are murderers who do things like that. But it's all good. I'm, you know, God, great, let me come back. I ain't mad. Um, I don't got no no problems with nobody. I wish peace and happiness. And uh, what's, the people, what's, what's the thing that people don't understand about you the most? What do you think the press has done wrong? They have made me um, immortal. In what way? What you in a bad way and in a good way. In a bad way because they've made me just something that I'm not. You know what I mean? Because what they do is uh, take advantage of one side of me. And just make that me. Mm -hmm. um, they don't put the good with the bad. If you put the good with the bad, I'm, I really seem normal. 
I mean, maybe a little, a, a little bit better than normal, but I st I'm still normal. If you put the good with the bad, if you just look at the bad, you're gonna be like, damn, that nigga crazy. That nigga's retarded. You know what I mean? But if you if you just took all my good, you'd be like, oh, he's he he mad soft. He don't do shit. You know, he corny. But if you put it together, I'm talking about the good stuff. Talk, what do they overlook? The good stuff. I take care of a lot of people, man. I don't have any kids. I'm you know I don't have nothing, no responsibilities, and I take care of a lot of people. And so, um, and I do that not to say I could do, I just do it out of the kindness of my heart because I feel like if you do something good, it'll come back to you. So I take care of a lot of people. I take care of my whole family. I give away cars and all that type of shit. Buy sneakers for people, take care of people. Can I get one of those? Um, I think I do good, like, in those ways. I think my music is good music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think the shit that I say, no one else says. What, to talk about that. You, you Nobody, do like completely different no, songs and you kind of like little who, short stories like Who that. was writing about black women before Keep Your Head Up? Now everybody got a song about black women. Mm -hmm. But who was writing about that when who I wrote about, about that? Who was writing about their papa? Who was writing about their own, they own problems? I wasn't talking about just, you know, blah, 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 blah. I was talking about my real problems. I was really having problems with police. I was really having problems with, you know, life and just being black and why, why the hell we got to get stepped on so much, you know? But damn, I'm making it. I thought I was successful. Well, I'm still getting stepped on. How come I still got a boot print on my back? And I'm successful. I just couldn't believe that. So instead of me just bugging out and doing a post office move and just shooting everything out and going to jail for a million years, I just said, fuck it, you know what? I'm in here rapping. Why not just rap about some shit that's really happening? You know what I mean? And that's what I did. And that's when they started really kicking my ass for real. IRS and, oh man, every cop everywhere. Any kind of candidate want to come? I mean, it was getting to the point where I was having cases everywhere I went. People just bump into me and be like, Tupac hit me. And it was getting retarded. And then you got the vice president on TV saying, this shit ain't no good. So, of course, it makes people think, oh, my God, he's a true menace. And then the newspaper's going, oh, Tupac spit at the cameras. I'm spitting at the cameras because I bet you everybody, I'm not going to do that no more. Let me just say that. I changed. But I bet you everybody who um, ever been in that position where you're, in your private life, you're getting in your own car, you're not at no premiere nowhere, get in your car and there's 50 cameras there shoving their way into your car. You want to hit, but instead of hitting, you just, can I get my own personal space? I'm not, I wasn't just running after camera yeah. dudes. I just want my own, per I can't, there's a camera right here. You know what I mean? And I didn't ask for it to be there and that's my own personal space. How come females can be violated, but niggas can't get violated? That was violation. Motherfucker put a camera right here that I did not ask for is violation. So. But I got mad at that, you know, things like that. People didn't understand, well, why is he doing that? I wasn't doing that for the shock effect. I was doing that because, goddamn, you know, they wasn't respecting me. So they didn't deserve to be respected at that time. Now I'm wise and I know, just let them disrespect me because it's better in the long run. Because I was just disrespected like a motherfucker in the jail. So, and I learned that that's the price you pay when you don't swallow a lot of shit. I just was a bad shit swallower last year. But now I see... How does it feel to be free now? Free feels so good. You know, like a week ago, I was locked down for 23 hours. Somebody coming by telling me to clean up my cell, getting tickets for that, and, you know, in a small, tiny closet, and no hot water, and you got to eat this nasty food. And I was like, you know, all I kept in my mind was one day, I'll be back. Right, and I plot and plan and got so many plans. And my first plan was to do an album in two days, if I could, in two days. Well, now it's taking us a week, so we all right. We still there. After this, I wrote a movie while I was locked down, and uh, I'm gonna put that out. Um, I'm gonna be in What's it. What's the movie about? It's called Live to Tell. <laughs> it's about. Um, you wrote the whole script. Of it? I wrote the whole script. It's all finished. Mm -hmm. It's about um, this guy who's just coming of age. It starts out from when he's a child, all the way to when he's, up, you know, in his 40s or whatever, 30s, and and he's finally understanding like what is life really about. It's not like Minister of Society or Boys to Hood or nothing like that, but um, it's about life. I think it's really about life. I, it's semi-autobiography. I put some of the shit about my life in there just to like um, keep it real. But And I put stuff that I heard when I was in there, you know, because I was in there with dudes that was never going to see the sunlight no more. Dudes that knocked out their own lawyer. I'm listening to this dude tell me he knocked out his own lawyer. He did not like, the, you know, the way it was going down, and he knocked his own lawyer. I said, well, you didn't think you was gonna get out after that, did you? He was like, oh nah, man, well that's that's this thing. That's the homeboy was like, that's what I had to do. Um, and it made me like appreciate life more. I mean, you know, so what? I got shot. I'm cool though. I don't have any 
scars. You know what I mean? Um, I don't slur my words. My hands both go up. Everything is still cool. Um, was it tough recovery? Nope. Sure wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was walking around. They put me in jail three weeks after I got shot. Five times. No stories on 2020 about the miraculous, you know, survival or nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, damn, I'm just tape you. That's like super idiots. God damn, you know what I mean? If Marky Mark would have took five bullets, it would have been on the news for about at least a year. <laughs> like, that nigga is Superman. He's Marky Mark. He's the man. A nigga take five bullets, it's just like, when you gonna be ready to go to jail? <laughs> it's just, y'all was bred to take five bullets. You're supposed to be a, you, you know? That messed me up. And all the jokes, like uh, Jay Leno and all the dudes making jokes and shit. They don't make jokes about white people when they get shot. Nobody wasn't joking about uh, Reagan when he got shot. Wasn't shit funny. I know. It was so, was so cheap about my life, you know, that these niggas could just tell jokes. Then they wonder why we act the way we act. Why we, we act so anti-everything. It's because they are so anti-us. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sitting in, in jail in the hospital looking at TV and this fool making jokes. Who was the guy? What's I was like, the conservative guy? Rush Limbaugh? Yeah, Rush Limbaugh. Didn't he say something yeah. the day you got shot? Yeah. yeah. He so, was glad or something was, like that. Yeah. Like, so... Um, I wrote his ass a letter though when I was in jail. You did? Yeah, I sure did. So when you were in jail, did anybody come visit you? Who came visit you? Um, a lot of people, Jada. Um, a lot of people don't make me answer that because then I ain't gonna remember everybody. Like, Al Sharpton helped me out a lot. Uh -huh. Got me moved into a good unit and all mm -hmm. of that. Cause they had me locked down all day, every day at first. Mm -hmm. So Al Sharpton like kind of intervened for me. Um, Tony Danza wrote me though. That was like one of the best letters I got the whole really? time. Mm -hmm. Just that he was a fan, he liked the album, keep my head up, and mm -hmm. when I come out, come out stronger. And that, that was like one of the best letters I got the whole Did time. Did you know him there. before that? You just wrote nope, your Nope, never met him. Anything else like that? That's cool. Um, mothers writing me, mm -hmm. thanking me, um, telling me to talk to their kids, kids writing me, girls writing me, telling me, you know, I, I helped them. I got at least a thousand letters. With females saying, you help me get through this or you help me get through that, we keep your head up. Mm -hmm. So that made me be like, that's cool, you know, I'm, I'm finna, you know. Girls was writing me saying, I don't want you to answer my letters back, I don't want nothing, I'm gonna just keep writing you, because I feel like I gotta get this off my chest, you help me, now I'm gonna help you. Bam, no sexual shit about it, just all love, that was love, that made me say, okay. Because I didn't want to write no more, I was finished, I was like, fuck it. You know, I already went platinum, I already did everything I wanted to do, so I didn't want to do it no more. I already went number one, I already did my little thing. Nobody ain't say nothing about how I was in the, the maximum state penitentiary with the number one album in the whole wide fucking country. They just said, fuck it. First white group get a number one record, I mean, on, on white country record. Just white country R&B, anything. They be, oh my God, that's fucking wonderful. <laughs> These guys are so talented. They got it all, oh, everything. They got the look. I'm in jail. No promo. Not near nothing. My shit going number one all across the boards. Man, no, all they want to talk about is Tupac is in jail. He's not getting out. This is what he's in jail for. That's character assassination, if you ask me. Because if I was that hell of a bad person, my music wouldn't sound like that. It wouldn't affect people. When you go, you know, number one, that's not just black people. That ain't just thugs. You know what I mean? Number one in the whole country mean number one in the whole country. You know what I mean? You sold 400,000 copies on the first week, wasn't it? Yeah, no question. I broke records. I broke, I broke records. Nobody ever did what I just did. Um, I was beating dudes who my mama used to listen to. Bruce Springsteen and all of that. I was like, damn. You know? Do you know what this means? Yeah, hell yeah. I'm on <laughs> country. I, dudes was banging on the wall in the whole jail. Everybody following where I'm, what I'm doing with my album. You just beat this dude. You just beat this dude. You doing that? Um, so that made me feel good. You know, that was like some kind of a. That was the only revenge I really wanted. Could you get a lot of support in jail? Or was, um, or was I got people support, like in jail. I got support from mo all the inmates. Nobody to my face never said nothing wrong. Everybody gave me my props. Um, from one CO, CO Blaze, he gave me respect. So much respect, they was about to fire him. He just treated me nice, you know, with respect. Everybody else was mad because I made more money than the warden. Mm. I tell, they beat me up in there. I tell you, no. They smacked me around, man. That was the worst thing that ever happened to me in my whole life. Cause, Cause I never, ever in my life have I ever been smacked in my face. Mm -hmm. These niggas 
surrounded me, put out their sticks, and smacked my face. And it was like, if you hit a CO, you get seven years automatic. So I was just like, right when you got in, they beat you. Up. Nah, this was like a while. This is why. What happened was, I heard I, you got put in solitary confinement or something. Yeah, that's what they would do every time I started getting lawyers to come up there. They say, well, he's smoking weed. Boom, boom. They could say anything about a piss test. I'm in jail. Do you know how that works? It's not like you, when you go to your doctor and they say piss in this. I'm in jail. They couldn't get your shit, walk around with it. You don't know. I'm Tupac. I made more than everybody in the jail. You think they don't care? You think they want me to just serve my time and get out? Hell nah. And believe me, I fucked up because I shouldn't have been running around the jail going, they, when they go, what's up, nigga? I'd be like, shit, I'm the richest nigga you going to ever meet. I make more than you, your homeboy, his homeboy, your uncle, because it was the biggest, where I was at was the biggest cases of, um, what do you call it when the families do it together? Oh, uh, that, whatever that is. That, with the, when the families, the cousins what? mix. This place, I'm not making this up. Statistically, Clinton. Clinton is famous for that incest. The family's mixing and doing it. The whole jail was done, was like families. The cousin, the uncle, the father. I swear to God. I swear to God. You think I'm lying? No, nah, Clinton Correctional Facilities is in upstate New York, Danamore. They had um, cousins, I'm serious, fathers, uncles, sisters, brothers that worked in the whole, I'm dead serious. The whole camp, the whole spot was run by the jail. Everybody got a job from the jail, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Right across the street, they got a bar, and everybody just go to, go to the jail, work, and go drink. And everybody was talking about me. They used to um, read my mail. They would come up to me and go, you know Madonna's coming to see you. It'd be on the news and everything. And I didn't even get the mail yet. <laughs> if you're the news and everything, uh, I'm looking at the news and saying, Tupac just got caught for weed. I ain't even got caught yet. <laughs> I was like, now hold up. Something wrong. You know what I mean? Um, but that's what it was. It was, it was. it was funny, but not funny. It was very humiliating. They got to search you, bend over, let me look in your ass. You know, every day to get my visit, I had to do that. It took me a long time just to get a visit. Because I was not going through the, I'm going to bend over and you're going to look at my ass shit. But after about two, three weeks, you start saying, well, okay, I'll show him my ass, but I won't bend over. Because <laughs> that's how the guards do it. They got to be up in there. <laughs> um, but as far as that, oh, MTV, all these, see, the media, they make me act like I would act. I'm in jail. They reporting that I'm getting raped in jail. I'm sitting in jail. Niggas is banging on my door going, pa, win, win. Why you ain't saying that? What's going on? Talking about, I got raped in jail. Ain't this a bitch. You did an interview with somebody USA Today, right? Yeah. Just about that, right? No, I didn't, I didn't even talk to them. They got that from somebody else. This other lady. But um, you know what it was, though? This, I think this country just got a fixation on my dick. You know what I mean? Because I got shot five times. All they wanted to talk about was my dick. The shot they went through, my dick. And my and nothing is wrong. They can't believe it. They just let us talk about one. Now he called one pop. You know what I mean? Now, if I go on his show and pull my dick out, I'm going to be an evil nigga. You know, everybody be like, oh, he's so disgusting. That's just what a black person would do. But this nigga talking about my dick on TV. <laughs> now, if I go in there and just neck it, you know what I mean? Just sit up on this city and go, what you call me? Count, nigga. One, two. What you call me? No scars, nothing. My shit is miraculously healed. So where did MTV get that story? You just heard about the guards. I was just fucking them. I'm telling you, I had like five lawyers up there a day. Mm -hmm. And that's what fuck up everything, because everybody got to write paperwork. So they used to say, okay, well, we're going to call the papers, because the papers used to call and say, we heard you was beating on Tupac. They used to go, no, we ain't beating on but he's smoking weed right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he just cursed the guard out. He just threatened the guard, you know what I mean? How many times have you been in there? I stayed. I, I, was, I just went out, like, a couple months ago. I've been out for two months, and then right before I got out, I got locked down again because I had a dirty cell. But it don't be a dirty cell. I had so much mail. And they used to come by my cell and say, throw away the mail. And I was like, I ain't throwing away shit, because I might have to answer these people back. What's up, Bogart? Come in, boy. Because I might have to answer it back. So um, they used to um, say, if you don't throw your um, mail away, I'm going to give you a dirty cell ticket. And that would get you locked down. Mm -hmm. So I used to be like, so you, when you were when you're locked down, did you, were you able to write then? Mm -hmm. So you wrote this movie while I you wrote the movie, Let It Tell. You're going to make the movie on death row? I don't know where I'm going to make it. Probably I want to, if it's possible at all. Death Row get first haps, first mm -hmm. of all. But, um, did that. Um, you gonna start? Yeah, I'm gonna do something in it. You got um, any other movie things coming up? Yeah, I began, I started writing two other ones. Plus, I wanna do, I'm gonna do the Nat Turner story, if God will. I'm gonna do Nat Turner. I wanna do that shit. Um, another album, got some groups now. Um, working on them. They like come Thug out. Thug Life, what are you talking about? Thug Life. I got Fatal and Felony. 
That's my little brother group. I got drama side of Those are my little cousins. It's not like that nepotism thing. They just real good. We just got it. So I'm putting it on wax. Uh, um, Sting, Prince, Marvin Gaye, those three, like, Don McClain, like, with his Vincent. I like to do, my, I like my shit to be like how Vincent was, that song by Don McClain. Because that shit touched, touch yeah, it, yeah, it just, it touch, it just reach out and get in your chest. Well, that's what Dear Mama was. Right? right, and that's how I like it to be, you know. Dear Mama is like, the well, strings are beautiful on that song. Yeah, thank you. And, um, Dear Mama was supposed to be like, for all the niggas that came you know, with their mouth, say what they want to say to their mama. You know, all the, all the dudes that I, excuse me, saying niggas, all the dudes that I know, they love their mama a lot, but they don't know how to say it, mm -hmm. besides saying, you know, I love you. So what they do is they buy cars, you know what I mean? If they dope dealers or whatever, they buy rings and buy, take on trips because they, they don't know how to say, you know, I love you. Mm -hmm. So they just do a whole bunch of shit for you, you know? If somebody talk about their mama, they want to kill a nigga, not because they vicious, but because they love their mama so much. So I was like, I want to make this song for them. You know, it, it could have been a different song. I could have made Dear Mama all sweet. Yeah, just put it to the side, thank you. But I wanted to make it real harsh, like like how it really felt for me, because that's how I really was. I really felt like I need, I owe my mom something, you know. Um, Where'd you get this ability to write the lyrics, these stories? Um, Shakespeare, I think Shakespeare, movies, my, my love for the theater, my love for acting. Talk about Shakespeare, not many people would associate you with Shakespeare. Cause they stupid. Well, talk about it. They stupid. Tell them, tell them what they don't know. Shakespeare used to do raw stories, man. If you look at uh, his stories, they just like the ghetto. This shit is like from the ghetto. You know, let's look at Macbeth and shit and just bust out of this nigga, bro, where he got a happy man who was already happy chasing after his, the king's wife, the female, the bitch, convinced this nigga <laughs> to kill her husband so he could be the king. The nigga do it, then start having delusions that he's still seeing the king. That is some get, that's what we be talking about in our raps. The nigga running around going, yo, he talking to his homeboys and shit, then jump up and just start talking to the dude he just murdered. That's some Scarface shit right there. You know what I mean? And the bitch just still just, she fucking with his head. She done made this nigga fuck his whole life up. That's ghetto shit. You know what I mean? And Romeo and Juliet. That's ghetto shit. That's like a nigga from the Bloods want to fuck with a, a female from the Crips and everybody against them. They got to sneak out when you want it, you want it. You know what, what I mean? This is great. What, what other kind of stuff like influence you that nobody would, would ever imagine? That's Shakespeare. Who else? Who else do you read? Um, who else did you study in theater with? Did I like? Shakespeare I like a lot. Because um, you, you write dramas. I mean, you, yeah. you, you write more like a drama than just a... Just a Because I like theater. I'm in, this, I'm in this movie shit, so I know when I'm acting, if I just come on acting crazy, that ain't really effective. But if I be real calm, and then one scene, I just blow up, that's effective. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I make the music where, you know, if I'm talking about um, Dear Mama, I just, I, I, I'm jerking for niggas' heartstrings. Mm -hmm. So instead of writing about, oh, mom used to cook for me, ooh, 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 I go right to their motherfucking heart and be like, you know, mom needs to smoke crack, I still love you though, boom, 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 because then niggas is going, oh shit, he ain't telling no song, he telling the truth. That nigga telling the truth. That nigga said crack on the radio. That nigga said crack. That nigga said his mama don't crack on the radio. Didn't it reach out niggas? Did all them niggas that mama really smoking crack? They be like, oh shit. Tupac mama used to smoke crack. And they in that situation right now. So then they can relax. They can feel that shit. They don't feel so alone. You know, when I be talking about females getting their ass kicked and they can play my record and I'm talking about females getting their ass kicked, it don't feel like they just by themselves getting their ass kicked. They can play that shit just to piss their boyfriend off. Can you get away is the piss your nigga song off. Cause he gonna always think, what well, you must really like Tupac. You know why you keep playing that song? And that's what I wanted to do. For all the females getting beat up, play my shit. Play Can You Get Away. And I bet you your nigga will be mad. If you tell any of these niggas that you are fucking with Tupac, you gonna get some attention after that. Cause they don't want you with me. Cause I'm gonna recognize you. I don't think I diss females. I think I give them love. I'm one of the only niggas that give females love every album. Mm -hmm. Well, so in regards to this case, then what what do you, the situation where you're on appeal? I know you can't talk about it. Directly, I can tell you that. But talk is I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Um, the female, some some other dudes, everybody that was involved caught me out of pocket. Meaning that I, there was nothing that I did wrong or against the law. But um, sometimes loving my people the way I love my people, how I kick it with anybody, that get me in trouble. And that happened a lot last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm the type of person where 
even if they got me in trouble, I ain't gonna snitch on them. Mm -hmm. But I'll take the trouble. But that's what happened. A lot of people got me crossed up. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, somebody intentionally crossed me up because they knew how profitable, profitable it would be. Because mm -hmm. I'm. Pick on, pick on the nigga the most. No, I remember me. one of the things that, that happened with you uh, that was dropped was the two cops. You know, that was. I ain't never heard a word the, about how them cops had guns that they stole out the drug case. They shot at you. They shot at me. Okay. Had guns out of drug case. These two rogue off-duty cops, drunk, going down the middle of the street talking about run niggas. They shoot at me. They get to some problems. Somebody shoot them. You know, and um, the case come out. Tupac shoots two cops. Right. I should be a hero. These niggas shot at me. Right. Stolen, I believe. Yeah, drug, I just I remember, right? uncovered a whole police ring. You know what I mean? I didn't get shit. I, got, I went to jail. <laughs> they dropped the case, right? Yeah, they dropped the case. I still went to jail. All that shit was messed up, but I was slipping last year. I wasn't really about that. You were slipping. I wasn't focusing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really thought everybody loved me like I loved them. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I said this in jail when I was in jail. I used to tell the dudes all the time. They was like, nigga, what was you doing running around with over $100,000 worth of jewelry on? Mm -hmm. I was like, niggas wouldn't hurt me. I'm them. I really felt like that. Mm -hmm. Ain't I dummy? See, that's what was thug like. Mm -hmm. I was like, no thug, no nigga with a gun will ever come against me because of who I am. I represent these niggas to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Niggas would not hurt me. I was worried about white people. You know, like, the Klan and shit like that. They've been being like, well, he is the nigga to fuck with. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, niggas wouldn't hurt me. That's why I was an easy target. So what'd you learn from this last year? Shit, that um, I don't have any niggas. You know, I don't have no friends. It's just me against the world. And I have acquaintances, I might have soldiers that fight beside me, I might have um, comrades, friends, niggas, but I don't have no, f I mean, not even friends, I just don't have no friends. Just got people who pass through, you know, and the ones that stay true, stay true forever. When you were in jail watching the OJ thing, what'd you think? I was mad, I was sad for OJ. But the day that they said that nigga was not guilty, I was screaming up and down in the, in the um, I was in jail, the visiting room, police was like, shut up, you got shut up, I was like, hell no, OJ free, God damn it. They was mad as hell. Every cop in there was red-faced and shit because they was like, another nigga got away. Did you they identify with that? Or did you feel like, it, like you've been accused a number of times? I identified with him in a way. Another way I didn't, I was like, damn, he don't know how lucky he is to be able to have his case live so people could see what's going on. Uh -huh. You know? Because like with my shit, if people could have seen what the hell was going on, they'd have been like, wait a minute. Bam, bam, bam. That's why I'm going to win my appeal. If God, if there is a God and everything is real, watch me wear my pill. It'll come out. You know what I mean? But um, but I, I did, uh, uh, I connected with OJ in a lot of ways because I could see in his face, you know, what he was going through. I could see with his daughter, you know what I mean, and Arnell and all of them going through all that drama and mm -hmm. his family and the cameras everywhere. And I, I saw Arnell the other night and I was like, damn, I know it must be hard now because everybody's all in your face, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She was like, yeah. They didn't even know me until this shit happened. Mm -hmm. And that's fucked up, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why she wasn't important before? Now she's so important, you know, so that's how it is. So what's the future, what you got? This record coming out, when's the record gonna be out, what do you guess? We're trying to do it by Christmas. Yeah, by Christmas. And that'll be a record if mm -hmm. I do this, because you know, I got out in um, the middle of October. Mm -hmm. We're gonna promote for a month and drop it in Christmas. Mm -hmm. Christmas present from Tupac to all the people that supported me. <laughs> That made me number one. That's what I want to do. And you know what else? Why didn't I get no goddamn video award at MTV? Why they don't never even nominate me, man? Why? Because who the hell I am? Who else did? They talk all this shit about gangster rap. When a nigga do some cool shit, they ignore you. They just totally ignore you. You ain't doing shit unless you blowing some shit up. That's why I watch when I talk shit. Everybody going to be in my face like, why are you talking about this? Why y'all wasn't coming up to me going, why did you make such a beautiful song and blah, 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 blah. And why don't you get recognized and do da 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 They don't. Mm -hmm. So that's why I saw a fuck death. That's why I look the way I look through the papers. Like, if you have a good heart, then the story gonna come out right. If you don't have a good heart, you could, you could come out with the same thing. Everybody's watching this, 
but they can come out tomorrow. Tupac drunk in the studio, cursing out everybody, you know what I mean? And da -da 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 -da. He says white people was too happy, OJ went to jail, race war coming, he was in jail. <laughs> He was with murderers. He com he messed with murderers. You know what I mean? You can do anything. You can put your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying, we just both sat here while I drank a beer. That's normal. But see, that don't sit on no papers. Mm -hmm. It just sounds too plain. That's it. He was drinking a beer. Okay, well, how was he drinking it? Was it half full? <laughs> <laughs> so he was drunk. He was drunk, <laughs> drinking a beer. And there was a girl next to him. <laughs> what was they sitting together? <laughs> he was drunk, drinking a beer, feeling on this girl next to him. You know what I mean? And then shit just growing. Was there other people in the room? He was having a gang meeting in the room. He called you a hunky and da 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 da. You know what I mean? And that's how he called for people. Like, that he never changes. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's how it is with me, but I got used to it in jail. What's, what's the one thing that, that nobody ever asked you when you're in an interview that, that you wish they'd talk about? Damn, man. How can a man of 24 write such write songs about women the way you do? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I listen to how all these women always talk about how rappers hate women and boom, boom. I got not just one song on every album. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I talk about women's pain more than other women talk about women's pain. Mm -hmm. I brought up, I, I might have been the first motherfucker to talk some shit like that. Talk about women on welfare. Now, hey, nigga that talked to any song slow, they talk about women on welfare. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was the first nigga to serenade the whole the females on welfare. First nigga. Um, first nigga to say, I don't give a fuck, you got stretch marks and a baby daddy. Mm -hmm. I still love you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm I'm your pinup dog. You know what I mean? Since these other niggas ain't fucking with you, everybody to fuck with somebody else. I was like, I'll be y'all niggas, you know? And it was all good until they start saying I raped them and shit. Because then they start wanting to be with me. And I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Then they get mad at me because I'm not that nigga that they thought I was. I want to be y'all hero, but I want to be a real hero. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be no nigga that I can't. You can't make me who you want me to be. This is who I am. They get mad. So then if you can't have me, we might as well see his ass in court for a couple months. And that's how I got that case. Mm -hmm. There's probably some more like that. Well... I mean, right now you can leave here. We had a great conversation. Um, some dude can come in here and blow my brains out. Damn. I still ain't even finished. This is just the conversation for one day on one day about certain things. Tomorrow I might be talking some other shit. So the, this movie that you got working, you're gonna work on, you're gonna do with. You think you might land it with Death Row or what? I believe so. I hope so. I got a lot of people talking to me about it. Have you got any other movie movie offers just for acting? Yeah, a lot of them. What came in? Um, they want me to do a lot of cowboy, a black cowboy, I don't remember his name. They want me to do, um, who's that? Yeah, I won't say the name of the interview. Nigga, I mean, we said we might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they do it, you blow them up. Studios or what? Yeah, Not studio, up. these people who can do it. Directors? Yeah, they come, they wrote me or whatever. Mm -hmm. They want me to do this other big movie. I ain't gonna say the dude's name. It's like an action adventure story, politics and shit. And, um, CBS want me to host this show. A television show? Yeah. Like one a weekly show? No, it's this one drama series called Second Chance about this kid who um, go to juvenile, come out, and show like this whole problem thing. What do you do to get out? It's like know, a documentary? Precious, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to do an interview with MTV, that their first little show for MTV interviews. And the, um, the guest, I was like, I got to do it when they tell me who else is on the show. Yasser Arafat and um, <laughs> and Sean Penn. Yeah, Arafat yeah. and Sean Penn. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty weird. Throw me family. up in the middle, man. Throw me up in the middle and just tell Yasser I'm, I'm on my way. I'm coming through. You know what I mean? So what's going to happen with your LA case? You got an LA case? Yeah, we're working on it. Like we're working on it. I think as soon as the facts come through, I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, you know, they, LA was saying some shit I just couldn't do at the time. I was have five holes in me and it was like, come to court. Mm -hmm. so I said, hold up. So is this, this this whole chapter of your life that everybody's been reading about and right and wrong as you, mm -hmm. as you see it is that is that part of your life over now you after this jail thing you've been into something media. new? It's up to me. First, of all, I mean for you. Some I mean. of it I did. It's not everybody did me wrong. I did some wrong things. Mm -hmm. I made some mistakes, but normal mortal man mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think I did good for a person who wasn't raised. You know what I mean? I just was out there. I raised myself, and so I did all right. You know, I ain't on drugs. I ain't selling nobody drugs. I'm making my own money. Leave me alone. So if the media chooses to leave me alone, I'm fine. But if the media want to be there every time I have an extra drink, 
Every time I'm with more than five dudes, then the people are gonna go, oh, look, he's gangbang. Oh, look, he's getting drunk. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All I want to do is live my normal life. It's already not normal. It's already with wherever I go, people looking, pointing, all that. I gotta go through that myself. That's no problem. But I don't need no new headaches. Just leave me alone. When people call and say, guess what? I just saw Tupac. He was just a little bit. But let that shit go. It ain't news. I'm not news. Why am I always in the news? They had me in the news. I used to read shit when it used to be like, Sister Soldier got a new book coming out. Just like that other controversial dude, Tupac Shakur. I'm not even in the story. <laughs> I remember that. You know what I mean? Right? It'd be in the news. It's like there was two murders yesterday. Not like when Tupac got shot. He made it. But everywhere is just a Tupac. What are you going to do about this case coming up? The lawsuit's coming up, right? Yeah, I'm going to try to handle it. You know, I saw anything I could do is keep my head up and push through this shit. And until the wheels fall off, I'm going to still be me. Whatever happened with the lawsuit, will you sue the police? Up north. I settled with them because they kept calling me back to court, man. I had to accept the little 40 G's they gave. They bought me they a Lexus. They, sold it. they bought me a Lexus. Right. When did they do that? Um, they did that a long time ago. Over a year ago. They settled. I could have took them to court and won, but it was too much court. Now I already had like 50 other court cases that I didn't start. And everything, I was like, fuck it, I'll take the money. The lawyer's like, we can fight. Like, nah, <laughs> so is there anything else I haven't asked you? That you want to talk about? Um, why do people just put me on different value points and they put a normal man on? You know what I mean? I should be able to make mistakes like everybody. So I don't have to be one of them closet psychos. Do you realize all these people you really think is so cool probably go home and put a ski mask on and run out and kill people and blame it on niggas? I'm the only one that tell you when I'm mad. I'm the only one that tell you when I'm happy. That tell you when I'm in love, when I'm sprung, when I want to talk about money. I'm the one that tell you how I feel. So you don't got to be scared when you see me walking down the street and be like, damn, niggas is crazy, that nigga looks psychotic. I'm telling you what's on my mind. I don't hate all white people. I did not want to start no wars. I don't got no problems. I don't want no problems. I just want to talk about the shit that's bothering me. Just to get me through the day and to get me paid. Because I, I dropped out of high school. This is my shot. This is it. So then there's a job, you consider it art too, right? This is art, I love this shit. Talk I love just it. a little bit about that, about the art, I love, the art aspect of it. I get off on creating, I get off on it. I get off on coming in the studio, for four days I got a complete album. That is what I, sh I make goals, shoot for it. I was like, I'm gonna do this album record time, just blow up. I wanna be able to release this, and when they ask me interviews, I wanna be able to say, I did it in less than a week. So they could be like, oh, maybe maybe then I'll be, they'll say you got talent, but they're probably not, they're saying, it's easy. Niggas can rap, they're rhythmic. Talk about the talent. You know what I mean? It's, it take a talent to do this shit. We'll be in a, okay. It takes a talent to do this, you know what I mean? But we don't get recognized as artists, you know what I mean? Just those songs I was letting you hear, that shit ain't easy. Right now, you hearing it, right? Mark my words, write this down too, and remember this on here. You gonna see in the summertime, or whenever this album come out, watch how that song affect the niggas in the streets and you'll see the talent that we possess us as writers as producers as engineers as whoever involved you're gonna see the talent when you see how this song i made in this little room it will affect this whole country watch that song with me and snoop watch that one be in every car watch you're gonna be like damn Pac told me see it's, that's the talent part i ain't just guessing oh i think uh this song they gonna club to this. I'm telling you exactly the emotion. This the, that's gonna be the one. They be in their cars when all the white people be like, "Oh, that music's too loud." That's us. That's gonna be my song. You know what I mean? Um, watch short is gonna be a thug. Mm -hmm. Watch everybody be having conversations about that. Watch people say this album is misogynist and this is women and whoop you out the wham and whoop you out the boom. And I'm 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 first album first song that song you know me in fact first song that answers why we call you bitch mm -hmm. and it explains it. There are bitches, and I explain who the bitch is. And that's why we call her a bitch, and that's it. So when we saying bitch, 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 let us talk. Just like when women saying, men is dogs, men is dogs, men is dogs. What if niggas just start, I'm tired of these women disrespecting us. We're not dogs, we're human beings. We don't do that, though. Why we got to do that? You know what I mean? They'll be like, don't call us bitch, you fucking dogs. You know what I mean? But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> It's bad. I know, but that's how the world is. That's not how niggas made the world. That's how the world is. 
If y'all mad about how shit is with, I don't treat you. I treat women like soldiers. You, you see, I let you talk plenty of shit, man. You talk all type of shit. We got women in the studio. If we was writing some shit that hated women, they would be sitting here going boom, boom. You know, I, mean, I, I, I know let, plenty of bitches. I, I let my mother hear my whole album. Plenty of hoes. Everything you heard. I let my mother. She mama. loved. She was crying. I let her hear before we I even laid in the studio. She was crying. What was that like? I'm gonna cry for a second. Now I just got on the phone. When she started crying, to hang up on her. Her mother will cry in a second. Yeah. She got one of them cries that just make you just go, oh, come on, please. Nah, all right, stop. Damn, my mother would just be crying. So by the second verse, I just had to hang up on it. Let the music play. <laughs> but uh, she liked that shit. And um, I got to back away from that shit, too, because it starts to look like a formula. People are biting it already. Yeah, but you got a real talent there, man. No, but that's I mean, bad, that's, man. No, that's, that's all like, I had. That, no, I don't know how to rap fast yet. with my tongue. Yeah. I don't know how to talk well, plenty of slang. Do that too, but you I don't got like a like real that. heavy country accent. I don't got all that You're shit. You're the only guy All I got that. is to talk from my heart. I could do that. Now that's niggas is biting my shit. But that's a good look at the MTV. Watch how many niggas talking about they girl. You shouldn't give it up yet, Don't get beat up and, you know, keep your head up and different words. Everybody got So Charlie Parker was supposed to be bop because he stirs. I mean, like... No, I like you, you how you No, but you got to keep on what, what you do. I mean, you you really started that shit. And, and I got to really get my props. I got to get my props. Why are they going to wait don't stop. until I die don't and stop. do me like Jimmy Hendrix? Oh, talented black man. Oh, beautiful. Music's gorgeous. Just can't believe it. You know what I mean? Then I'm dying. going to be like, oh, Tupac just, oh, God, did you hear the music? Did you hear the words? The guy was deep. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why I'm alive. Go, oh, gangster rapper. Gangster rapper. Gangster rapper. He's fucking up our kids and so how, how to, to answer that to, to people who don't you write about gangster stuff, you write about I don't like stuff. gangster shit. You write about you write about shootings. Shootings, that is not gangster shit. The police shoot people. That is not gangster shit. I write I write about life. You know what I mean? It just so happens that now Cook, in what 19, was crooked ass. Crooked ass nigga. That, that was, was about a, a guy getting a, No, that was about a dude who robbed me. Right. I had got my first legal gun. Right. My homeboy, who was in all the videos, right. broke into my house when I was out doing a show, doing Arsenio Hall, right. and stole my shit. Right. And it was legal. And I called the police, and the police was like, so? Uh -huh. I was like, oh shit, I just got robbed. I'm calling the police. And they said so. Uh -huh. This was a long time ago. Well, you write a song. What was the lyrics of the song you were you just saying with uh, Snoop? Snoop? Yeah, Snoop. That's the bond. Two of America's right. most wanted. What was the, what was the, the nothing but a gangster what? Ain't nothing but a gangster party. Yeah. yeah I, okay, I, so you're singing it in there now. People are so trying first to First of all, I did not What's sing What's a gangster that. party? I did not sing it. Right, but it's on it. your My record. Man, <laughs> I don't know, it's on your record. Okay. So, but so it's, it's on, on your record. record. And so, so how would I break so, it down? So Parker says, you sing that and you sing about your mama. No question. So, so, I so think, talk about I that. Think people don't understand you I think that song is called Two Mess More. But that little hook in there ain't nothing but a gangster. That shit is just the bomb. I'm not going to take it out. That shit is the bomb. No, but what I'm trying to say is, it's there. You don't have to. Yeah. What's wrong with What's wrong with it being there? No, but what I'm saying is, as soon as like this dude is in the background singing, ain't nothing but a gangster party, and now I'm Mr. Gangster Music. That's bad. No, because the interpretation of gangster is also getting that bad. Because well, that's what I'm asking. Talk about it. Nah, I'm just saying. Nah, I'm not even trying to interpret that. I'm just saying. I'm not saying nothing. I'm, I'm just saying, for the record, you I, don't, write about anything, I do not right? believe that I'm a gangster. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that. I created my own, because I didn't want people to get me mixed up with gangsters. Mm -hmm. That's why I started saying I'm a thug. Because mm -hmm. to me, the gangsters is different. I'm just, I'm a thug. I'm just a regular old, and thugs is not Superman. We ain't special. We just uh, brothers who fight back. You know, we're not the ones that steal your purse. We're not dudes that steal your car. We don't do car jackets. I don't, I don't, I'm not for that. I'm not with people who steal and do all that shit. Mm -hmm. Nigga, get paid. I'm with those niggas, the niggas that get paid. Them little tiny young niggas who be dropping brand new cars, you be like, I know that nigga ain't got a job. Mm -hmm. I'm with that, because that takes talent. He, he a young CEO. You know what I mean? So that's why I call them thugs. Give them some pride. Nigga got pride, you don't want to die, you don't want to kill. You know, thugs isn't about beating up people. Nah, it's not about, it's about being beat up and coming up. I'm a little nigga, man. Did y'all ever write this down, man? I'm a little nigga. You know what I mean? I be out there with the big boys, man, throwing it. I can't throw it soft. I got to throw it hard. So niggas know this is how I get down. And then that makes it good. You know what I mean? That makes people go, oh, okay, I see. Just from the words. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing but a gangster party. All, all, every, it's not they, just because they like the beat that they're going to be bopping their head. It's going to be them words that's going to hook them. You know, I think so. And so, that's fine. That's fine. It's good, man. I appreciate it.